Okay, we're live. I'm Trisha Sutterstrom, and this is my very dear friend, Dr. Melanie Wilson. And we were talking today, let me turn this sound down. Um, we were talking today a little bit, and I thought, you know, I really want to jump on Facebook and talk about um, just calm, how we can calm our fears and continue to trust God during this really crazy time. So I hope that um, this broadcast will bless you and that you will share it out with your friends. And um, let me just introduce to you Dr. Melanie Wilson. I know her through what used to be Homeschool Scopes a long time ago. And that was how I kind of fell in love with <laughs> um, really amazing group of homeschool moms that would meet together with live broad through live broadcast and um, just really encourage one another in our homeschooling journey. And now so many moms are home with their children, right? right. And home educating whether they wanted to or not. So Melanie, tell us a little bit about yourself and okay. then we will jump into our topic. Okay, so before I had children, I was a clinical psychologist working in a Christian clinic and then I started homeschooling and I went on to have six children. Three are graduates now and I have three still at home, but my college boys are back on break this week and they are gonna be learning at home. So we're gonna be um, a busy household <laughs> and probably so many of you are experiencing that as well. And I write organizing books for homeschoolers and I write elementary language arts curriculum. And I have a podcast called The Homeschool Sanity Show. And I just love the privilege of what I get to do to, to speak calming words into homeschoolers' lives. Mm -hmm. And you have definitely done that for me. And I have to say that I love Grammar Galaxy. My son loves for <laughs> me to read that to him, even though he's 12. Um, so before I get started, before we get into our topic, I just want to let people know that I'm using StreamYard. I won't be able to see your comments unless you sign in to StreamYard. StreamYard. And then um, I, I do have Facebook up here. Hopefully I'll be able to see comments there too. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, if this is just popping up on your feed, I'm Trisha Soderstrom. I blog at aboundinginhopewithlyme.com. And I am passionate about sharing information about Lyme disease, homeschooling with chronic illness, and faith and helping us through all the trials and difficulties in life. And so that's mm -hmm. what I want to talk to Melanie about, because as moms, we can tend to be a little bit emotional. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, right? But we... we <laughs> sometimes can just really feel things a lot deeper than our husbands do. And those feelings can kind of spread to our children. Our children are very sensitive to our moods and to, you know, how things affect us. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask Melanie, how can we handle our feelings and emotions right now during this difficult time? How can we stay calm and kind of exist? like peace to our children when we feel like maybe the whole world's gone crazy. <laughs> well, it does seem that way for sure. Well, the first thing that I wanted to share with your viewers, Trisha, and thank you so much for having me here. And it's been such an honor and a privilege to get to know you. And I am so um, proud of what you do in ministering to people who have chronic illness and they want to exercise their faith. And so I want to talk with you more about that today too. But when we have a chronic illness or we're, we're being treated for cancer or, you know, there's anything else going on with us where we know we have a compromised immune system, we know to stay away from people who are sick. That just becomes right. automatic, right? Right. But when we know that we are vulnerable to anxiety and depression, we're not as good about avoiding those triggers to mm -hmm. have more anxiety and more depression. And I think that one of the biggest triggers that people in your community need to be avoiding right now, Trisha, is the news. I agree. The news. <laughs> yep, I agree. <laughs> I um, just turned on the television a little bit ago and I was thinking that it was going to be on 
my HGTV channel. I really enjoy watching that. And instead, up came the news. And it was just horrible, just horrible, horrible, mm -hmm. horrible. And, um, you know, I know that there can be some anxiety that we're going to miss something important to know. But all you have to do is say to a family member who watches or friends who watch to say, hey, if there's something that I really need to know, will you let me know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Text me, call me so that I don't have to be glued to the TV screen. You you don't need to see that. It's right. really doing none of us a favor. So yeah. that would be my best advice to you. And then replace the time that you would be spending watching the news by being in prayer and being in the word. Mm -hmm. And um, Trisha, I was just, I was doing some praying right before I came on with you. And I have these scriptures on my phone to meditate upon every day. And I wanted to share them with you. And I forgive me because I don't have the references with them. I just have the scriptures. But mm -hmm. um, these are the scriptures that I wanted to share with you. This is Jesus speaking. I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. Mm -hmm. In the world, you will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. We're having that. But take yeah. heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus yes. has already done it. He already has a victory. Okay, and then next, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your requests be made known to God. And then I love this one, and this is so related to what we're talking about. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because mm. he trusts in you. God isn't going to keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on the news right. and stayed on what could happen. <laughs> um, right. He wants us to have our minds stayed on him. So every time you find yourself worrying, freaking out, go right back to who is God? Is God bigger than this virus? No yeah. question. No question. Do you know that he can stop the spread of this virus right now? Yep. He is able. He could stop at this moment. He isn't. So he has a purpose. Mm -hmm. He has a purpose. And we know from scripture that he is working everything together for the good of those who love him. Yes. And so what I am telling you is that we have to model that faith and that trust and that focus on Jesus Christ in our lives in order to give our kids confidence. Because if they see us coming unglued, mm. you know, we're their, we're their, um, their safety net. Yeah. And if we are falling apart, they are going to fall apart. Uh, and, and really that it, it is so important that we don't give way to fear because that more than anything is going to have an impact on our immune system, which is God's creation to keep us healthy and well. Right. So we mm -hmm. have got to keep our minds focused on Christ. Whenever the worries come, we have to go to him and say, Lord, you know, and if you just can't do it, I have had times like that too. And I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about those in a little bit, but when you just cannot get your mind off of what this virus can do to your health, your family's health, to your finances, to the world, when you just can't do it, go to him and say, Lord, I want to not have fear, but I can't. And right. Be I need you. Yeah. And I need mm -hmm. you to take this away from me. So, you know, that is a wonderful thing to model for your kids. And, you know, you can say it is easy to be afraid in this situation. But here is what I am doing. I am asking myself, is God bigger than the coronavirus? And if the answer is yes, then I will not give in to fear. And here's the other thing. This is what I have to do with myself and with everyone I talk to, what, no matter what they're anxious about. I will ask them, do you believe that nothing and no one can take you out of this world until God is finished using you here. Mm. And if you believe that, 
then you don't have to be afraid because this virus cannot take you. It can't take you out. Right. But and even for new believers, being in God's word and being in prayer will give you that strength, even if you don't have that um, history with God, to know right. that he is who he, is, he says he is. If you don't know scripture, ask a friend, Google you know, a topic and find the verses that go with that topic. And that's how you can learn what God's word is. You can learn who he is and you can start to develop that relationship with him. Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, we grow, we grow in our faith, but this is a great, this is a great testing ground. Faith is not faith when everything is going great. <laughs> that's not faith. Can you hear me? Okay. Right. You're freezing up and breaking oh. up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let me know if it's still there. You are a mess. okay. Am I okay now? I hope. Yes. There's a delay for some reason, but okay. you're here. Okay. I can hear All right. You. Well, I will continue, um, and I'm just going to pray that it will it will come through. So, the other thing that we know is that if God has chosen to use the coronavirus to take us or someone that we love home to heaven, mm -hmm. there's also nothing that we can do to stop mm -hmm. that. There's nothing. Right. But here's, here's the amazing thing that I have learned through my own trials and tragedies is that should that be the plan, God will give you his grace. Mm -hmm. And his grace means the power of Jesus Christ, the strength of Jesus Christ in you to cope in, in, in a way that we cannot even fathom with yeah. very challenging circumstances. We don't have to worry about it. And a, a lot of anxious people are like, well, I don't feel that right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel that strength right now. Well, you don't because you don't need it. Right. If you need it, it will be there. That reminds me of Corey Ten Boom's father. And she said, he told her, you know, when do you get your ticket when you go, you know, or when do you give the train? And she said, right before I get on. And he, uh, something like that. Oh, okay. um, you know, basically that's when you get the grace that you need is right when you need it. Amen. And we yeah. have to remember that. And, you know, God asks us, Jesus asked, which of you by worrying can add a single hour mm -hmm. to your life? Yep. You know, when people have asked me, you know, what would you change about your homeschooling if you could go back and change? That's the number one thing. I wouldn't yeah. worry. Right. What a waste. What a waste. Because really nothing that I worried about has, right. been, a, has been a chronic, you know, unsurmountable problem. <laughs> nothing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I hope and I pray that you will let go of worry, which is really us trying to be God. God doesn't need you to be God too. He's got it. He is in control of this entire process and he is going to use it for good in ways that we cannot even imagine right now. Right. I know that this is true. And I also want you to know that I am speaking to myself right. as I'm speaking to you. I am human. Mm -hmm. I have anxieties. So uh, we have to encourage one another and build one another up with these words. Yes. These are so many of the same things. And even the verses that I shared in my podcast on Monday, feed your faith and starve your fear. And, um, and these are just things that we learn as we walk in the faith and we walk with the Lord and we have those experiences. You know, I went through 10 years of chronic illness with Lyme and then watching my kids suffer and having that fear, not knowing if we were going to get better, if, if one of us, you know, was really going to um, die or whatever, we didn't know. We didn't know if we would, you know, ever overcome that. But what I learned was that it wasn't in my control. I couldn't keep worrying about it. I just had to keep seeking him and keep walking with him through that. And um, and then he did bring us to the other side. So, mm -hmm. you know, my faith has was strengthened through that difficult time. And that's what happens when we go through trials is that God makes us stronger and he also grows our relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're not supposed to worry about tomorrow. We're only supposed to deal with today. So when I 
was ill. I was quite ill myself. Um, I, I thought, you know, I was going to die from this illness, but I would ask myself a question that I encourage you to ask of yourself. And that question is, am I okay right now? Mm -hmm. So that's my question for all of you. Are you okay right now? And I bet the answer is yes. If you're yeah. okay right now, that's all you need to concern yourself with. You don't have mm -hmm. to flash forward into a potential nightmarish future. <laughs> you just don't have to do that. Right. You're okay right now. Praise God. Praise God. You're okay mm -hmm. right now. And that's that's what we're going to do. We're just going to uh, yes. do now. We're going to do today. And then trust him for the rest. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it, it yeah. may be now and then 10 seconds later you're not you know right and right. I know for myself I just did that podcast and then yesterday I went into the grocery store and all of the fear and hysteria and panic and the cleared off shelves really got to me and I was so surprised because mm -hmm. I thought you know I was ready for anything but I'd never seen anything like that before mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. had to just come home and and just kind of get a grip <laughs> uh -huh. and uh -huh. remind myself you know of what was true so right, God right, will provide, right. he will take care of us, and yes. we just need to do the very next thing that we can do. Right, right, absolutely. And, you know, we know that one of the things that helps people who are anxious and depressed is helping other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, identify someone who has needs, whether they're uh, emotional needs, physical needs, and be available to them. And, you know, Listen to what you're saying to those individuals mm -hmm. as a message for yourself. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm yeah. preaching to myself. So we, we know that it helps so much when we have a purpose other than sitting around and thinking about how bad things could be. So get to work, <laughs> get to work. Yeah. And, you know, I might use this time to give you the tips that I have been sharing with my community and that is, besides the two biggies that I just said, stop watching the news and mm -hmm. spend more time um, in prayer and in the word. But that would be get some exercise, get into the fresh air if you can. Yes. Um, I was so interested in the fact that in 1918, the medical um, professionals realized that people who were put, patients were put in fresh air recovered much more quickly from that flu than those who were kept inside. There is something wow. restorative about the fresh air. So if you can get it, do not be afraid of going outside. Yeah. Go out and get it and exercise if you are able to. Get your heart rate up. It is so good for our emotional and our physical health. So I think mm -hmm. that is huge. And then next, do not tamper with your usual routine, if at all possible. I mean, I know some of our routines are out the window now, but right. the rest of it doesn't have to change. So don't start staying up until 2 a.m. and then sleeping until, you know, 9 a.m. Don't right. do that. That is so not good for you. And it's just going to tell your brain something's really wrong something's really bad that I know nothing is the same, you know, you know, all the mind games that we play with ourselves. So just go about your life as normally as possible and be productive. Use this time where we have to spend more time at home to do all the things that you always said you wanted to do that you had to have time. Never to have do. time for. Right. You never <laughs> have time. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, it could be anything. You could read classic books. You can um, do courses online. You can learn anything, anything mm -hmm. that you would like to learn Spring online. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh oh, you locked up. Oh, did yeah. I? Oh, I was just saying spring cleaning. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. Organize. <laughs> I'm going to tonight, since all my family is home, except my oldest who lives on his own, and I'm going to go through and have everybody talk about all the things that we could do, both like projects around the house, mm -hmm. um, plus, you know, games and entertaining things that we could do. Um, mm -hmm. So we won't miss this opportunity. We don't want to just squander it, just sitting there looking at our phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't right. want to do that. 
I want to really make the best use of this time. Um, because this is, this is, we hope and pray, a once in a lifetime opportunity to mm -hmm. have more family time, to, um, you know, spend time building those relationships and taking care of things that we put off for months or even years. Um, we have an opportunity here. And we know, psychologically speaking, that the more productive we are, the happier we are. Right. It's not lying around um, that makes us happy. It's getting mm -hmm. things done. So don't drop those activities. And that keeps your mind occupied and it keeps your mind mm -hmm. off of what's going on around you. So Absolutely. those are really great points. Yeah. Now, do you have any more points for moms? Because after that, I want to talk a little bit about how to help our anxious children. Okay. Yeah, sure. So one of the things that I wanted to share with you is that when I have been, I have been in two positions, two opposite positions. So um, this is how God has worked in my life. And I believe that you can ask God to work in your life this way. So uh, a few years ago, right before Christmas, I went to the doctor and the doctor was very concerned that he had found a lump in my breast. And he mm -hmm. said, I want you to see a breast specialist in January. Great. That's great. You know, my Christmas is going to be ruined <laughs> because oh. I was so anxious and I just called out to the Lord and I just said, Lord, I cannot do this. I cannot do life being this anxious. And so you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help mm -hmm. me. And I did my own, I know this is maybe TMI, but I basically did my own breast exam and I discovered that I had the exact same lumpiness in both breasts. There was absolutely no difference. And I just knew right at that moment that there was nothing wrong, that it was mm -hmm. just normal breast tissue. And mm -hmm. I was totally at peace. He gave me perfect peace. I knew I was fine. I went through Christmas. I enjoyed the whole thing. When I saw the breast specialist, she said, I don't feel anything but normal breast tissue. Wow. And I wasn't surprised at all. Not yeah. at all. But I have also had the situation where God, because he knows me, he knows mm -hmm. how I freak out. <laughs> I freak out over things You're right. where he has prepared me in advance for very difficult things. When I mm -hmm. have, you know, either I've, I've asked him you know, how is this going to turn out? Like I, I just did this with a friend of ours who was diagnosed just out of the blue with pancreatic cancer. And he gave me this, I, I don't even know really what to call it, but I just knew that he was going to take our friend home. Hmm. I, I didn't want that, but I knew that he was going to do it. And he hmm. did. But I, I could tell you a whole other story about how God was so glorified in all of that. Um, strong believer. But what has also happened to me is that God has given me a dream of something or just a sense of something that I really, really, really don't want to have happen. And it does. But I knew ahead of time and it helped me cope so much. So I knew ahead of time about a miscarriage that I had. And so mm. when it happened, I just, I mean, it was very mm -hmm. difficult. Don't get me wrong. It was very painful, right. but it would have been so much worse if God hadn't prepared me for that. Mm -hmm. And then of course, after the fact, he walked with me through that. So I'm just mm -hmm. saying, even if the worst happens yeah. in your life and for your family, God is going to be there for you. And so we yeah. can rest in that. And I found myself in that same situation last year, this time, tomorrow, I looked on the calendar, tomorrow um, is the anniversary that I went to the hospital and my I had a diverticulitis flare and was sent home twice and then my colon ruptured. Now, you know, that's scary. And then to have to have my very first surgery ever be a life-saving nine hour surgery and wake up with a colostomy bag, you know, he gave me perfect peace during that whole time. I was not even afraid going into 
starting to calm down. And I was like, well, I'm not even anxious, you know? <laughs> so I just knew that everything was going to be okay. And if it wasn't, I knew where I was going, you know? Right. So he just, he really is so good about that. When we look to him and we trust him and, you know, I was up, you know, that night before listening to scripture music and we were texting back and forth. I think that was the same time your husband had a stroke, um, had some, yep, had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, so when we do look to him and he promises that he's going to give us that peace and right. the end of that verse is that he gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. And it, it, there was no way to explain the calm that I had, you know, as I was going into surgery. So I'm very thankful for that. And that's something that I hope that our viewers will um, just remember and just really trust God and go to him with all mm -hmm. of your fears and anxieties. Amen. And, and, you know, yeah. take your kids there with you too, you know, as right. we talk about being mm -hmm. a mom. Mm -hmm. And I can testify to the fact that you were very calm. I kept looking at your messages on my phone, like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're in the hospital. Like, I think you were like in the emergency waiting room or something. And you're just like trying to be so supportive of me. <laughs> like what? So well, no, when we minister to other, yeah, when right. we minister to other people too, it takes our mind off of our own circumstances. And then we do have that peace and we're speaking God's word to someone else to help them, but it also comforts us as we're doing it. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's just a beautiful thing the way God works. Right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So when if we have anxious kids mm -hmm. and they're they know what's going on, they're not going to school, they're at home or maybe we homeschool them, but they still know what's going on. How can we walk them through? Now, mm -hmm. I had a child who had severe anxiety, so I have some ideas, but I want to know what you okay. think. Um, what is your experience with that? And how can we tell our moms how to help their kids, how to communicate to them about what's going on? Right. Well, I want to start with a quote that I shared with my readers and on um, Instagram today, because I, I was just amazed by the timing of this. So weeks ago, I had planned to share a podcast episode on a Mr. Rogers approach to homeschooling. And as I was preparing the email to send out about that new episode, I got to thinking, you know, I wonder if Fred Rogers ever said anything that would be comforting at a time like this. And wait, you can you say oh, that yeah, one more time? Yeah. So I looked to see if Fred Rogers had said anything that would be comforting at a time like this, because, oh, okay. you know, that's what he he did. He was always speaking, you know, calming words to children in times like this that were frightening. And what he had said was that when he was a boy and he would see scary things on the news or scary things were going on, his mother would always say, look for the helpers, hmm. look for the helpers. You will always see people helping. Yeah. And that is basically uh, what I want to share with your viewers about what we want to do with our kids. We want to direct their focus mm -hmm. to the positive, to God and how big and powerful he is, you know, read them, read them the historical accounts from scripture of God, you know, changing things and, and saving his people because right. he is so powerful and awesome and loving. Mm -hmm. So we can do that. And then we can point people to our children rather to the positives. I mean, I have seen so many people online being incredibly generous and helpful, you know, yeah. homeschooling mom saying, Hey, if, if you need help with your kids at home, you just tell me. If somebody needs me to go get them groceries, let me know. Right. Um, and, you know, this is an opportunity for us to see the best of humanity. I know that the news tells us about the worst of humanity, but the Oops. best is out there too. Yeah. And so we can direct our kids to mm -hmm. information like that. Um, and we also want to, just like I said, for yourselves with the exercise, kids are not going to be in sports now. And we want to make sure that they're getting exercise. They need to go outside. They need to play. Um, go out there and play tag with them. If you haven't played tag in a long time, let me just tell you, that's one of the hardest <laughs> exercises. Yeah. It's like exhausting. It's a killer workout. So um, go out and play tag. Go out and do 
a nature walk. There's no reason that you can't do that, um, even right. with these circumstances. Um, you know, mm -hmm. just do play some board games. We have been playing board games as a family, and it's really a lot of fun. I don't know if it's going to be a lot of fun two weeks from now, right. but I'm only <laughs> focusing on today, right? That's right. <laughs> And the more you do, deal with it. yeah, the more you do go outside, it breaks up that monotony. And even as yep. homeschool moms, we know if things are not going well for a walk, yeah. and it changes everything, it changes moods, it just changes the yeah. whole atmosphere. So right. it's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, have a dance party. Yeah. Um, you know, just do do some karaoke, do do TikTok. I've never done TikTok, but I, I mean, there are, there are all kinds of fun things that we can do and praise God that we have the technology that is allowing us to talk right now. Yes. Take, take, make use of that. Mm -hmm. Have, have the kids chat with grandparents and with friends, um, you know, just kind of dive into your kids' world and let mm -hmm. them, you know, like my daughter is always saying, I want you to watch this movie with me. Well, I've been putting that off and I'm, I'm not going to be able to get around it now. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that movie <laughs> with her. Um, okay. <laughs> but you know, like your kids, they, they want you to play video games with them and they, they want to show you cool YouTube clips and things like that. And, and this is your time. Do mm -hmm. that. Let them help distract themselves with you as a participant. And I think that will make a big difference. Um, yeah. You know, get, get them doing real exercise though. Um, you know, get some sit-ups going, some push-ups and um, do some YouTube exercise videos there are some Christian dance videos called Refit that I really like that you can have younger kids do with you. Um, so, I mean, there are just there are a lot of things that we can do to distract ourselves. Um, and this is what I keep um, hearing repeated to me. And I, I love it and I am believing it. And here it is. It's this too shall pass. Yeah, this too shall pass. It will. Yeah, it, it will, will pass. We will look mm -hmm. back on it one day and we will have, I'm sure, some negative memories, but we're also going to have some fond memories mm -hmm. of what it did for us, for our faith and for our family closeness. Right. Definitely. So you and I both have in common that we have kids and sometimes that can be really hard to keep our young adult kids home. And now <laughs> they're told that they should stay home. <laughs> So mm. what are you doing to encourage that and just to help them understand um, how important that is? You know, um, I, I wish you hadn't asked me that question because okay. I really <laughs> haven't had to deal with it yet. Um, you know, I think uh, I think it's go really going to be a family discussion if our kids say, well, you know, we want to do this activity. Um, in all honesty, one of my college boys just came back from um, a little mini spring break. They were at um, one one um, one kid's lake house, and there were several boys there that you know were having a great time together. And I am honestly happy that they got mm -hmm. to have that time. Um, yeah. And you know, I think I think we have to look at what our health officials are telling us, you know, to be, um, you know, to get the facts because there, are, you know, there's so much misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I would do that and then discuss it with your spouse and pray about what you, what your young adults should and shouldn't be allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, I think that's just, I don't know really any other way to manage it. You know, right now, um, my kids are not saying, oh, hey, well, they did want to go rock climbing, but that's closed down. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. can't do that. Right. Um, you know, I don't know that there are going to be a lot of options mm -hmm. um, for them to hang out. You know, would we would we say yes to having a few friends come over as long as as that that those young people are not symptomatic and they've had no, you know, exposure to sick people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would be okay with that. Yeah. And we not know that, group. yeah, we know that as moms, our role completely changes, you know, when they hit that right. adult stage, you know, they're adults now, but you know, just yeah. I, like Lori is saying here, communication with our young adults 
who are still at home will be pretty important. Yes. But looking at the big picture is important. So I think that's the key is really communication and just right. you know, discussing that together. You know, one thing that is pretty cool about our young adults, uh, which I don't know what, well, I, I know it wasn't the case when you and I were um, young adults, is that my kids already know all this stuff, you mm-hmm. know, because they're on. Um, they're online, they're on their phones, they already know what the recommendations are and why this is all being done. So it's not like they're going to be constantly fighting me and saying I'm being ridiculous. It's not like this is mom's rule. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that helps a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we would get any pushback, I think, you know, you want to take a real um, kind of a coaching stance and just say, well, you know, this this is why um, we're of this mindset that we want you to be safe. And, um, you know, what what do you think? Um, why are you of that um, opinion? And, you know, what could be the consequences of your mm-hmm. choices? And are you prepared to deal with those consequences? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this is great. Do you have anything else that you want to leave with the viewers about what we're going through right now. You know what? I just, yes, I just thought of something. We know that music is so, so healing. And this is a wonderful time to listen to uplifting music and just to Mm -hmm. let it quiet your soul um, to, you know, praise music. What, what a great thing. I have been loving, loving, loving that. And we know it's so good for us emotionally. And it's something that you can be, instead of the news, you can put right. on some praise music and sing together as a family and, you know, at least have it on in the background, um, you know, with your with your kids home. I don't know that my kids probably want me to have praise music on 24 seven, but um, yeah. even if I have it on in the background, I, you know, I think it, it says something. It's communicating. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, God's in control and we will get through this. Yes. I am a firm believer in the music. I love music and love to sing. So that's a good, good idea. Good. So great. Thank you so much, Melanie. Tell everyone where they can find you one more time. Sure, sure. So my blog is psychowith6.com. And I am planning on doing short videos about parenting and mental health on my YouTube channel. So you can go to youtube.com slash psychowith6. That's a number six. And I will be sharing there. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Psycho with Six. Also, that's my blog name. Um, if you're interested in Grammar Galaxy, you can go to GrammarGalaxyBooks.com. But that's pretty much it. Awesome. That's great. Much. And everyone knows that you're on Abounding in Hope with Lime Facebook page. I have a new podcast called Abounding in Hope Talks. I'd love for you to check that out. And um, I have a few videos on YouTube under the same name. And I'm really active over on Instagram. I like Instagram a lot. So thank you again for chatting with me today. I hope this was a blessing for everybody and just take care. Don't forget to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't look around you and turn the news off. Get outside and get some exercise, (laughs) right? Right. (laughs) And let's encourage one another during this time. Thank you so So, much. Thank you guys. Sure. Have a good night.